Hello everyone, I'm Andrew DiMolanta and welcome to this week's tutorial on 3D camera tracking in After Effects. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you my workflow with camera tracking and a couple of tips and tricks along the way. And a couple of pointers before you go out shooting your footage, make sure you plan all your shots out. Make sure you know which shots you want to be compositing 3D effects into because you don't want to be doing more work than you have to. And time is money, so the more time you spend trying to fix things in post or on set, you're wasting time, you're wasting money. And a couple of things that I found helpful when 3D tracking is shooting at a higher shutter speed and limiting the shallow depth of field. This way it makes it easier for your software to track the camera because it relies on a lot of sharp contrasting points. And shooting at a higher shutter speed reduces the motion blur and lessening the shallow depth of field makes it easier for the software to tr uh, pick out track points. So here we have my first clip in Adobe After Effects. We're gonna do, first, we're gonna go ahead and track the camera by right clicking and hit track camera. It's gonna an analyze the shot and solve the camera for you. Uh, so let's let, go ahead and let it do its thing. So here I have all the track points that the software has spit out and I don't like the size of the track markers. So I'm gonna go ahead and jack those up and I'll also increase the size of the target. And we wanna go around and see which three points best fits the angle I want, I'm going for. Or we could also pick our own track points. I'm gonna go ahead and try to do that right now. That looks pretty good. So before we create a camera or any kind of solid, what I want to do first is right click and set ground plane and origin. Once we've done that, right click again and then create camera and solid. And we can play through and see what that looks like. And it looks like it did a pretty good job. But say you want to actually composite a 3D object into this scene. And what you do is you go into your project window, select your sequence, and hit file export and export to cinema 4d and you can name it let's name this one track one then to bring it back in you want to import it back into after effects and then select it and hit edit original and then cinema 4d will open up now this isn't a tutorial on how to use Cinema 4D. I, I'm pretty novice at Cinema 4D. I'm more of a Blender user. But for simple effects, like simple objects compositing, this Cinema 4D Lite works pretty well. So save, so save the project, head back to After Effects, and then go ahead and drop it into your composite. And there is a 3D text that we added in Cinema 4D. And what's great about this integration with Cinema 4D and After Effects is it works exactly like it would with After Effects and Premiere Pro as well. So any changes you make in Cinema 4D will affect the changes in After Effects. Um, obviously, this isn't perfect. Uh, I, there's other ways of going about this. You use third-party software and plugin to track the shot and create an actual 3D environment and do it that way. But for simple objects like text or if you're in a quick like time crunch, this is a very quick and easy way you can achieve this. But now I want to go over a trick that I developed to help composite 3D objects in a shot that really doesn't track all that well. So here I have a shot that I didn't plan out all that well. And when you look at the track data, you see that it, it doesn't have enough information to make a great origin plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pick a point that looks good. Let me track through this really quick. And let's say I'll just choose this track point here. Go ahead and create a camera and solid and just play through. And it does a decent job at tracking the shot, but as a, a 3D track, it's horrible. So what we wanna do first is create a new null. Pick whip it to your camera to the null. So now that your camera is attached to that null. And then next thing you wanna do is create a new solid. And you wanna add a grid to that solid. Now this is gonna act as our plane. So you wanna make sure it's a 3D object and then you want to rotate it on this X axis 127 degrees so it's completely flat. So the next thing you wanna do is duplicate it and reset its origin and make it so it's completely vertical, but we want to 
take its anchor point and move it so that the bottom half of it meets up with your floor. So now that we have a back wall and a floor to your shot, what you want to do is grab your null object that you created that you parented your camera to, and you want to move this null object, make sure it's three uh, null, and you want to move this to where it lines up with your shot. Now this is going to take a little bit of time and effort, but just be patient and just to make sure to get it right. All right, so I've gotten to a point where it looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but it looks convincing enough. And you can export it the same way to Cinema 4D like you did before. And again, you have all the information you had before, the camera, and you have your two solids that you created. And you can go ahead and add your 3D text like before. And there is your 3D text like we had in the previous shot. And of course, after this step, you can go ahead and add shadows and anything else you wanted to in Cinema 4D and then composite it in After Effects. Obviously, you want to do something more complicated. You use a third-party uh, software or plugin to track your shot and use a different uh, software if you would like. I use Blender. I'm not well-versed in Cinema 4D. So, but if you want to see a couple of my shorts with that, I'm leaving in the description below. Go check those out if you want. So if you found this tutorial helpful, hit that thumbs up button below. And if you have any questions or if you have a topic you'd like for me to cover, leave them in the comment section below, or you can tweet them to me at Drew DiMolanta. I'll be doing tip and tutorial videos every week, so be sure to subscribe to be updated on all of those. So until next time, I'm Andrew DiMolanta. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.